Hi, I'm John Davis, and this is Motor Week. We'll trek up to a new SUV summit in the Ford Expedition, then roll down to the Your Drive garage for often overlooked car care. Stephanie Hart cruises to an East Coast mini takeover. And then we'll all rejoice in the revival of the Acura Integra. So come drive with us next. Television's original automotive magazine brought to you by for more than 30 years Lucas Oil Products has helped people tackle mechanical problems in the automotive marine and industrial fields from our original four core products heavy duty oil stabilizer power steering stop leak transmission fix and fuel treatment Lucas Oil has developed over 400 custom products to help both professionals and do-it-yourselfers to learn more visit lucasoil.com Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Motor Week is proudly sponsored by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper, featuring major brand auto and truck parts and service from coast to coast. Service is the difference. We get it. Learn more at autovalue.com and bumper to bumper.com. TireRack.com is proud to support Motor Week. And now, a very brief history of TireRack.com. First, there was the wheel than the tire. We'll call it Tire Rack. 40 years later, we're not slowing down. TireRack.com. The Ford Expedition arrived in the late 1990s, a time when car makers seemingly couldn't build SUVs fast enough or big enough to satisfy people's desire for big off-roaders. Well, through four generations, it has matured into a fully modern utility, checking off all of the boxes of today's buyer's must-have list. So where do we go from there? While always a big vehicle, when the fourth generation Ford Expedition arrived for 2018, it was even bigger and more capable than ever, done likely as an attempt to satisfy excursion owners who no longer have a Super Duty based rig to meet their big hauling needs. This 2022 Expedition Max is the stretched wheelbase suburban fighter. It showcases updates that have been made to all expeditions to keep it competitive in what is once again a growing three-row truck-based utility segment. Seeing that Jeep entered the fight recently with their Wagoneer and Wagoneer L. Starting inside where changes are most easily noticed with a new dash design that allows for a much bigger infotainment setup. A 12-inch touchscreen is now standard with a 15 and a half inch vertical tablet similar to the Mustang Mach-E's available as is a fully digital gauge display. Our moderately outfitted XLT stuck with the standard gauge package with traditional analog dials, bookending an info-packed eight inch productivity screen. Some materials have been upgraded and there's a revised control layout below the touchscreen as well as on the center console. Even as one of the lesser trim grades, XLT comes with the trailer tow package Ford Copilot 360 and seating for eight with three row climate control and power folding third row. Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel and power liftgate can be added cost effectively with optional XLT equipment group packages. Until you've been inside this gen expedition, it's hard to convey just how spacious it is. There's so much room to spread out in all three rows of seating and an immense amount of cargo space too. 36 cubic feet behind the third row, 79.6 behind the second, and a max of 121.5 cubic feet. Our XLT tester sports the carryover 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, which gains five ponies, now outputting 380 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. But more significantly, there are now two higher output versions available, 400 horsepower for limited King Ranch and Platinum trims, 
and 440 in either of two new Expedition trims for 22, Stealth Performance and Timberline. The new Timberline series is the most intriguing to us with a multitude of unique exterior elements, along with added ground clearance, 33-inch all-terrain tires, and a two-speed transfer case to make it the most off-road capable expedition yet. Regardless of power output or trim, all expeditions work with a 10-speed automatic transmission, and maximum trailer tow is 9,300 pounds with rear-wheel drive and the heavy-duty trailer towing package. Optional four-wheel drive is Ford's control track system with an electronic limited slip differential available. So with standard power and four-wheel drive, we rolled our XLT tester into Mason-Dixon Dragway. It's a big vehicle, yes, but 470 pound-feet of torque is more than adequate to get it moving in quick fashion. We hit 60 in 6.1 seconds and finished out the quarter mile in 14.6 at 99 miles per hour. Extremely light steering had us guessing at times exactly where the front wheels were pointed as we worked through the cones. Plenty of body roll too, but nothing unusual for a big body on frame utility. And Ford claims they have the most driver assist technologies available in the class including their Blue Cruise hands-free highway driving on top platinum. Exterior updates for 22 are very minor, mostly just refreshed lighting and new grills for select trims. Government fuel economy ratings for a 4x4 XLT Max are 16 city, 21 highway, and 18 combined. We averaged a spot on 18.2 miles per gallon of regular. That's still a below average energy impact score with annual consumption of 16.5 barrels of oil and yearly CO2 emissions of 8.2 tons. With most of the SUVs we've tested recently pushing six figures, the Expedition seems like a relative bargain, starting at $56,315. XLT started $60,380 with just two grand on top of that for the max, making it a lot of truck-based SUV for the money. The latest Ford Expedition is indeed better than ever, and with more options than before, it's easy to build the perfect fit for your big utility needs. But no matter which Expedition you choose, you'll get a great family hauler that can basically do it all. The biannual Mini Takes the States road trip got back in full gear this summer. With thousands of Mini Cooper owners uniting and driving 1,700 miles over nine days. While our Stephanie Hart joined the pack and maneuvered some challenging American byways while discovering it's not just about the cars, but also about camaraderie and charity. Mini Takes Estates picked up speed in Burlington, Vermont, with a caravan of Coopers continuing on to Vernon, New York, Poconos, Pennsylvania, Frederick, Maryland, Roanoke, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee, and then on day eight, the Coopers came up over the Blue Ridge Mountains, camouflaged by a mysterious mist that eventually revealed all 650 Mini Coopers perfectly parked in solidarity. I met up with the Mini Cooper owners here in Asheville, North Carolina. There's a lot of excitement in the air, especially since the Reunite and Rally event hasn't happened since 2018. It was postponed twice due to COVID. The Mini Cooper owners tell me they're excited to hit the road today and drive the tail of the dragon, which is going to be incredible. It's a very um, personable uh, car to everybody. It's, their, it's, it's like their own child. As I find out, the daily Rise and Rally events create an almost Disney-like atmosphere that coaxes you to act silly. <laughs> so this bear used to be your co-pilot? It was my co-pilot, and we decided to uh, move him around. Get a lot of attention on I the road, a probably a lot of people beeping. Yes, we get a lot of people at <laughs> Mini. Especially when he floors it. The like, legs yeah, are the le flapping the legs and the wings a little. The arms are flapping, the head's bobbing down. <laughs> 
A car with personality is what owning a Mini Cooper is all about for a lot of these owners. Showing off their creativity and bonding with other owners is a large part of Mini Takes the State's mission. The road trip has been around since 2006. And one thing we've noticed over the years, there's more and more people going on the entire trip. And these trips are anywhere between 9 and 14 days. And right now we have about 900 people going the entire distance. People like the Paines, who are brave enough to travel 1,700 miles with a 15-month-old. How do they do it? A lot of music and just talking. <laughs> There are also about 80 dogs along for the ride. Makes sense since money raised from this event will be donated to Best Friends Animal Society. Can I get a paw? Happy. Oh my god, that face. After making so many new friends, it was time to hit the road. We left together in one big, cute looking caravan. It would take us a few hours to reach the tail of the dragon. I'm behind the wheel of the 2022 Mini Cooper S. I'm having a lot of fun driving this car. It's responsive, it feels quick, and its sharp handling makes tackling the tail of the dragon a blast. We did like the back of the dragon, which is like this crazy uh, twisty road. It was good, kind of got me back into like that manual type way of driving. So it definitely helps, you know, when you're getting those tight turns and go up and down hills. After following a terrific drive route for about eight hours, we ended up here in Greenville, South Carolina at Floor Field, where a celebration is underway. It includes games, food, and music. That was awesome. On our way home, I spotted this, a lifted second generation Mini. It's built on a Ford F-150 platform with a 426 Hemi. It made me smile strangely and think to myself, why? A pretty perfect ending to this nine day adventure spanning 1700 miles on state and country roads from Vermont to South Carolina. In the end, $91,000 was raised for Best Friends Animal Society. Even if you consider yourself meticulous about your car's well-being, you just might miss something. So just in case, here's Audra Fortin with some often overlooked car care advice and this week's Your Drive. Maintaining your car is a task. If you own a car, well, then it is such a priority to make sure that you do take real good care of it. You know, putting a good coat of wax on your car is going to help the finish to prolong its life, and that's certainly an overlooked maintenance. In addition to that, take a look at your headlights. Headlights used to be glass. Now, headlights are plastic. Because they're plastic, they oxidize from the sun. You can see here, there's a haze coming over this headlight. I call that cataracts because there's actually a uh, light that's being limited that you can't see through. Something as simple as using a headlight polish with a chamois and some elbow grease is going to help you to clear the headlight and restore it back so that you can get great visibility on the road. Another overlooked maintenance is your engine air filter. Think about the air filter like your lungs, taking in air so that your body can breathe. Your car breathes also, and it needs fresh air in order to breathe. Take a look at this air filter. It's filthy. It's got oil and debris and all kinds of blow by. This restricts the amount of air that can actually be pulled into the engine while your car is trying to breathe which limits how much fuel you're going to burn, and this costs you in 10% fuel economy. Another very important overlooked maintenance is your tires. To make sure that your tires are rotated, every other oil change makes a difference. You know, if you think about the tires on your car, they are your car's shoes on its feet, just like you have shoes on your feet. You can tell how you're walking if your car is in alignment just by looking at the tire tread. Most important here about tires is to check your tire pressure. You'll find the sticker on the driver's side door jam has the correct pressure for your car. And to check your tire pressure, 
every month, especially when you have seasons change to make sure that you have the correct tire pressure in your car. That will make sure that your tires last the most life. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us right here at MotorWeek. Actually, turning a key is getting rarer, but we're just as eager as ever for another quick spin. The sixth generation CRV compact crossover is here, and with it comes the latest hybrid model, which Honda expects will make up about 50% of all CRV sales. We think 100% of customers will be pleased with their new CRV, but for the half picking up hybrids, you'll be especially thrilled with the updated powertrain on top of the other Gen 6 overhauls, all of which we experienced firsthand in Santa Barbara, California. The powertrain consists of a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine paired with a 2-motor hybrid system. Together they make 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque increases of three ponies and 15 pound-feet over the outgoing model. The Sport Hybrid is front-wheel drive by default, with all-wheel drive available. The Sport Touring is all-wheel drive only. Regenerative brakes and one-pedal driving help efficiency, now up to 43 miles per gallon city, 36 highway and 40 combined. When it comes to hybrids, you really do get the best of both worlds. More horsepower and better fuel efficiency. And the 2023 CRV Hybrid is a great example of doing just that. We were cruising through some Santa Barbara back roads earlier, and I will say that extra 15 pound feet of torque really does help in propelling you through the corners. Inside, the front seats have been revised for posture and stability. Rear passengers gain over half an inch more legroom, and cargo space grows to 36.3 cubic feet behind the rear seats, up to 76.5 when folded. The Sport comes with a 7-inch infotainment screen, while the Sport Touring boasts a 9-incher, although both trims include digital gauge clusters for easy readouts. With a starting price ranging from the mid to high 30,000s, we can see why at least half of 2023 Honda CRV sales will be for one of these hybrids. And we'll have plenty more quick spins coming at you soon. This past month was a busy one for our long-term 2022 Kia Carnival, adding more than 3,600 miles to its odometer, bringing our five-month tally to a hefty 10,900 miles. And while doing all that driving, we had time to play with the Carnival's drive modes. Along with the usual eco and sport modes, there's also a smart mode, which monitors the driver's braking and steering inputs and adjusts the throttle response and transmission shift patterns accordingly. Basically, sport when you want it, eco when you're lazily cruising, and normal for the rest of the time. If you're the set it and forget it type, smart is the mode you want. For the most part, it does a pretty good job of understanding how you're driving and then responding accordingly in real time. It can be a little slow to interpret inputs from time to time, so if you're the I want what I want when I want it type like me, it's best just to select the drive mode manually. Mileage has stayed very consistent, currently sitting at 23.2 miles per gallon of regular. That's not bad for a 290 horsepower 3.5 liter V6. Winter is near. So we'll soon see how the carnival measures up to frigid weather on another MotoWeek long-term road test update. The name Integra has near legendary status in the auto world. And it was a sad day in 2001 when Acura chose to change that name to RSX as part of a new marketing strategy. Sadder still when Acura stopped selling it here altogether just a few years later. Well, the Acura Integra is back for 2023. So let's find out if it's worth celebrating the second time around. The original Acura Integra did much to help grow Honda's new luxury performance division, introducing Americans to new terms like Type R and VTEC. But eventually, Acura decided the younger sport compact crowd was not who they were after. But that was then, and this is now. This reborn 2023 Acura Integra 
should not only appeal to drivers looking for a tidy, tech-heavy sport luxury ride, but also those wanting to relive their fast and furious glory days of yore. Powering this Integra is the upgraded version of the Honda Civic small but fairly mighty 1.5 liter turbo four from the SI. A unique exhaust system helps it deliver 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque to the front wheels. It comes with either CVT or six-speed manual transmission, so you can easily guess which side of that we favor. The manual includes rev matching and even gets a serious limited slip differential. Now, the original Integra was mostly successful in disguising its humble Civic roots, but the new one seems to embrace them with the same slick five-door hatchback shape. Though the diamond patterned frameless grille and jewel eye LED headlights are all Acura. A diffuser style lower rear fascia integrates dual oval shaped exhaust tips. 17, 18 and 19 inch wheels are available. An optional A-Spec Sport Appearance Package adds black trim, front lip spoiler, and shark gray 18-inch alloy wheels with Continental all-season performance tires. Inside, there is a tech forward feel with a standard 10-inch digital gauge display that is a super clean design. But to really make it special and stand apart from its Civic cousin, you need to add extras like 16-speaker ELS Premium Audio, the technology package with head-up display, and the A-Spec package with stainless steel pedals and contrast stitching. Now you're talking. The standard integrated dynamic system does a good job of adjusting throttle response, transmission mapping, steering feel, and settings for the available adaptive dampers in normal comfort or sport modes. Unique gauge displays arrive with each one. Upgrading to A-Spec and technology package also brings more customizable individual settings. Taken to the back roads, we found that like many Acuras, it is a highly capable machine, but one that puts the exclamation point on refinement rather than emotion. Driven more aggressively at the test track, the car is very tight with only moderate body roll, due in part to great Acura tuning and in part to its already more than capable 11th generation Civic platform. The adaptive dampers, a feature not available on Civic, seem to excel best in smoothing out the ride when you want it, more so than boosting handling performance. As to boost, the Integra may be working with only 200 horsepower, but it makes the most of it. The very light clutch allows for easy launching with good grip and a slight chirp of the tires on the way to a zero to 60 of 7.5 seconds. The shifter is buttery smooth and throws are relatively short. We finished out the quarter mile in 15.8 seconds at 91 miles per hour. During panic braking from 60, ABS pulsing is very noticeable, but stops average just 110 feet and the pedal has a nice firm feel. With the manual transmission, government fuel economy ratings come in at 26 city, 36 highway and 30 combined. Our lead feet yielded an acceptable 28.9 per gallon of premium. Pricing starts at $31,895, but to get the full experience, you really need to go all in with A-Spec and technology packages, which brings it to a still more than reasonable $36,895. Acura had to know they were stirring up controversy as soon as they molded the Integra name into its front fascia. The 2023 Acura Integra may not be the overly emotional Integra that many people remember, but it is a fine, totally modern sport luxury contender. One that is perfect for a time when many are more than willing to pay a little extra for something unique and special. And on that score, it's a bargain in its class. Still, we can't wait for the Type S to take Integra to the next level. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, for more Motor Week, including daily news updates, podcasts, and even complete episodes, cruise on over to pbs.org slash motorweek. And I hope you'll join us next time as we jump behind the wheel of one extraordinary utility, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Extrema. Then go totally practical in the new Honda HRV.
Till then, I'm John Davis. We'll see you right here on Motor Week. To learn more about Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine, visit pbs.org slash motorweek. To order a DVD of this program, call 1-800-873-6154. Motor Week has been brought to you by... For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has helped people tackle mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial fields. From our original four-core products, heavy-duty oil stabilizer, power steering stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment, Lucas Oil has developed over 400 custom products to help both professionals and do-it-yourselfers. To learn more, visit lucasoil.com. Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. Motor Week is proudly sponsored by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper, featuring major brand auto and truck parts and service from coast to coast. Service is the difference. We get it. Learn more at autovalue.com and bumper to bumper.com. TireRack.com is proud to support Motor Week. And now, a very brief history of TireRack.com. First, there was the wheel than the tire. We'll call it Tire Rack. 40 years later, we're not slowing down. TireRack.com. This program was produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content.